Okay, so for problem 12-4, the question is what amount should the home office adjust the allowance for overvaluation of branch inventory account? Okay, so again, uh, the allowance account would represent the markup on the inventory or goods shipped by the home office to the branch. Okay, and please take note, class, if the question is how much is the adjustment, that simply means you are asked how much is the markup on the cost of goods sold of the branch. Again, you will encounter this question a lot more times. You will be asked how much is the adjustment, by how much should the allowance account be decreased, what amount should be the deduction to the allowance account. If the question is stated in those manner class, if you are asked for the adjustment to the allowance account, then you are simply asked to get the markup on the cost of goods sold of the branch. Please remember that one. That would be one of your takeaways for this problem. If you're asked for the adjustment of the allowance account, it is the same as being asked how much is the markup on the cost of goods sold of the branch. <clears throat> now let's try to go over the rest of the given in the problem. The home office ships merchandise to the branch at 50% above cost. On its books, the branch shows a beginning inventory of home office merchandise amounting to 15,000 and shipments from home office of 110,000. Because if the amounts are taken from the books of the branch, if the amounts are taken from the books of the branch, that means those amounts are at build price. Those amounts are based on the price given by the home office to the branch. It's very important to make a distinction between the build price and the cost. Okay, the branch only knows of the build price. Okay. And this is relevant in problems wherein there is a markup. There is a markup on the inventory or goods that are transferred by the home office to the branch. In the previous chapter, why is this not relevant? Because in the shipments made by the home office to the branch, no markup was added to the price given by the home office to the branch. But in this problem, in problems for this chapter, the shipments of the home office will now include a markup. Okay, so remember if the amount is taken from the books or the records of the branch, then that means those amounts are at the build price. The branch is not made aware of the true cost of the inventories. Okay, so that means, class, the 15,000 is at build price. What does it mean if it's at the build price? Okay, there may be an additional amount included there. There may be a markup added to that amount. So the 15,000 may not be the true cost of the beginning inventory. Okay, and please remember also, shipments from home office always at build price. After all, that is the account title used by the branch to record shipments received from the home office. But again, what does it mean if it is at build price? That amount may include a markup. Okay. Uh, so the 15,000 here is the uh, build price of our beginning inventory. While the 110,000 represents the shipments throughout the year from the home office. And this amount is also at build price. And it should not be difficult for us to compute for the... Uh, compute for the markup. I want us to compute first the markup included in the beginning inventory. Based on the records of the branch, the beginning inventory is 15,000. So the first question is, how much is the markup? How much is the additional amount billed by the home office for the goods forming part of the beginning inventory of the branch? So what do you do? You divide 15,000 by what? You divide it by 150% because the markup is based on cost. So the build price is 150% of cost. And to arrive at the cost, you will have to divide it by 150%. So 15,000 divided by 150% uh, will give you 10,000. Is the 10,000 the markup class? No, the 10,000 is the true cost of the 
goods included in our beginning inventory. So if the build price is 15,000 and the true cost is 10,000, what does that tell us? That the markup is 5,000, okay? You put that amount at the side, okay? If the first question is how much is the markup on uh, the beginning inventory, our answer would be 5,000. Now I want us to compute for the uh, mark up on the shipments class. I don't think it's a good figure, but let's just do it still. Okay. If the shipments from home office is 110,000, does this amount include the mark up already? Yes. So if you will be asked, how much then is the shipments to branch during the year? Okay. Please take note. Supposedly, your shipments from home office is the uh, partner of your shipments to branch. But if ever there are already marked up, your shipments to branch will not be equal anymore to your shipments from home office. Why? Because the shipments to branch is always at cost. When the home office records the shipments to branch, the amount that will be entered in the shipments to branch account will always be at cost. While the shipments from home office account in the books of the branch will always be at build price. Okay? But what then is the relationship between the shipments to branch and the shipments from home office if there are markup? The difference between the two class would simply be the markup on the shipments. Okay? So if shipments from home office is 110,000, we can already compute the cost of these shipments. And how do we do that? Divide 110,000 by 150%. Will that give us 56? How much did that give you? 70, 333, okay? 73,333. Is that the markup on the shipments class? No, that is still the true cost of your shipments during the year. And if you are solving for the markup, what do you do? Multiply that by 50% or simply deduct that from 110,000. So that means... The markup is how much? 36,667. How much was the markup in the beginning inventory class? 5,000. By the way, how much was the beginning inventory? 15,000. While well, the shipments from home office is? 110,000. Now, Assuming there are no purchases from outside parties class, what do you get when you add the, the beginning inventory and your shipments from home office? You already have your total goods available for sale. Beginning inventory plus shipments during the year will give you your goods available for sale. Assuming there are no purchases from outside parties. Okay? So, if you add these two class, 15,000 and uh, 110,000, that means your goods available for sale is 125,000, okay? And uh, another common question for this kind of problems class would be, how much is the unadjusted balance of the allowance account? Okay, how much is the before adjustment balance of the allowance account? And I want you to remember, if the question asks for the before adjustment or before closing, Balance of the allowance, what does that represent? That simply represents the markup on your TIGAS. Okay, please remember, if the question asks for the unadjusted balance or the balance before adjustments or the balance before closing entries of the allowance account, that is simply the same as being asked for the markup on your, the markup on your total goods available for sale. Okay, so let's try to solve class. How much is our total goods available for sale? 125,000. Okay, and again, these are based on the amounts taken from the records of the branch. So that means, so that means these are still at build price. Okay, if we need to determine the markup, let's get the cost first, get the difference, then that would be our markup. Okay, so what do we do with the 125,000? We divide it by 100. 50%. How much is 125,000 divided by uh, 150%? 
How much? 83,333. Okay, 83,333. But that is not yet the markup, correct? That is still the cost of this 125,000 goods available for sale. What do we do with the 83,333? We multiply it by 50% to get the markup or simply deduct it from the 125,000. And how much will that give us? 41,667. Okay. So that would be the markup before adjustments, before closing entries for your allowance account. Okay, 41667. But is there another way for us to get the 41667 class? Yes. You add the 5,000 we computed earlier with the 36,667 markup on the shipments. This would still give you 41,667. Okay, because what does that mean? The markup then on your TIGAS is simply the markup on your beginning inventory plus the markup on your shipments. Again, how did we solve for 41667? We solved for this one by getting the markup on the 125,000. Is there an alternative way of solving for the 41667? Yes. If the markup on, the, if we're looking for the markup on our goods available for sale, and since we know that goods available for sale is simply the same as beginning plus shipments, that means the markup on the beginning plus the markup on the shipments would also give you the markup on your TIGAS. Okay? But that is not what is being asked here. What is being asked is the uh, the amount of adjustment to the allowance for overvaluation account. And what did we establish earlier? If you're asked for the allowance, the adjustment to the allowance for the overvaluation account, what does that mean? You're asked for the markup on the cost of goods sold. Okay? So first, let's solve for the cost of goods sold. If you already have your total goods available for sale, can we start from here to solve for our cost of goods sold? Yes. What else do we need to do to arrive at our cost of goods sold? Simply deduct ending inventory. Are we given in this problem with our ending inventory class? Yes, the problem gives us ending inventory of 5,000. Okay. You deduct the ending inventory from your goods available for sale. Okay, 5,000 deducted from 125,000 would give you 120,000. And this 120,000 is our cost of goods sold. And if you'll be able to solve for the markup on the cost of goods sold, then that would already be your answer class. How do we get the markup on the 120,000? You simply divide the 120,000 by 150% and you would get 80,000. Is the 80,000 the markup? No, that is still the cost. What do we do with the 80,000? Multiply that by 50% or simply deduct it from 120, you would get 40,000. And that would already be your answer for problem 12-4. Okay. But is there another way for us to arrive at the 40,000 class? The answer is yes. What are we looking for here? The markup on your cost of goods sold. How did we solve for the markup on the cost of goods sold? We first computed for the cost of goods sold and simply determined the markup there. Is there an alternative solution? Yes. Because if the markup on the gas is equal to the markup on beginning plus markup on shipments, what does that mean? You can also use this one to solve for the markup on your cost of goods sold. Markup on the gas minus markup on ending class will give you the markup on your Cost of goods sold. I hope that makes sense. How do we solve for cost of goods sold? The gas minus ending. So if you're looking for the markup on cost of goods sold, it would make sense that since cost of goods sold is equal to the gas minus ending, then the markup on your cost of goods sold would also be the same as your markup on the gas minus markup on ending. We already have our markup on our uh, the gas. I just want us to determine the markup on our uh, ending class. How much was our ending inventory? 5,000. 
Okay, let's determine the markup on our ending inventory. 5,000 divided by 150%. That will give you 3,333. Is that the markup? No, that is still the cost. You deduct that from the 5,000 or you multiply that by 50%, you would get the markup on the ending inventory, which is how much? Okay, and you deduct the 1,667 from 4,167, you would still arrive at 40,000. Okay, now, which of the two methods do I prefer? You solve for the cost of goods sold and work from that, or you use the markup on beginning plus markup on shipments minus markup on ending to arrive at the markup on your cost of goods sold. I prefer the second class. Why? Because that would work even if the markup rates for the previous year and the current year are not the same. Okay, the first method we have discussed earlier will not work if the markup rates for the current year and the previous year are not the same. Okay, so for problems wherein the markup rates are not the same year in and year out, it's safer for you to uh, individually compute the markup on the components of your inventory. Okay, so get the markup on the beginning, markup on your shipments, and then the markup on your ending. So our answer here would be uh, 40,000. Okay, let's proceed to problem 12-5. But again, very important takeaway for uh, problem 12-4. Kasa, if you are asked, how much is the uh, balance after the adjustment? Oh, sorry, how much is the adjustment that is the same as being asked for the markup on your cost of goods sold? Plus, your allowance account is an unearned income account. Okay, and it is only earned once the goods shipped by the home office to the branch are sold to outside parties. Okay, so that's why if there is cost of goods sold for goods coming from the home office, it would be considered an adjustment to your unearned revenue account or to your allowance account. Okay, so the adjustment, again, the adjustment to your allowance account will come from the goods that are sold to outside parties. So that is why the adjustment would simply be the markup on your cost of goods sold. A very important thing to remember. Problem 12-5. Question here is, <clears throat> what amount should the inventory be reported in the branch statement of financial position? Okay. Uh, let's go over the problem. Power Corporation shipped inventory to its Bacolod branch costing 375000 plus freight. Power bills inventory to its branches at 120% of original cost plus the actual amount of shipping charges. At the end of the year, the Bacolod branch had resold 50% of the inventory from the home office. Shipping costs paid by power were 2000 Plus, how much was the uh, shipments plus? It's 375000 How much is the freight? 2000 Okay. So the total value of the cost received by the branch from the home office, including freight. Plus, remember, plus our freight would be, uh, this would be treated as freight in. So this would be included as part of the cost of your inventory. Okay. So 375,000 plus 2,000 will give you how much? 377,000. Okay. But what is the question? Uh, amount that should be reported uh, in your statement of financial position. Is the entire 377,000 still intact? The answer is no. So that means our inventory is not 377,000 because what happened to the other inventory class? It was already sold. How much was sold class? 50%. So if 50% is sold, what happened to the remaining 50%? It will form part of our ending inventory. So if 50% is sold, that means 50% is unsold. And of course, unsold goods will form part of your ending inventory okay so 377,000 divided by 2 how much will that give you class 
100. That's 377 divided by 2. That's how much? 188,500. But why is that not our answer? Because the question asks of the amount to be reported in whose statement of financial position class? The branch. And what did we say earlier? The branch does not know of the cost. What valuation is relevant? What valuation is known to the branch class? It is the build price. Okay, it would have been different if you were asked how much is the true cost of the inventory held by the branch. Okay, I hope you understand why our answer is not 188,500 plus. Because the 188,500 is the cost of the, the true cost of the inventory. But if you are asked to prepare the, <coughs> if you're asked to prepare the financial position, statement of financial position of the branch, it would be based on the build price. So what then are we supposed to do, class? Determine the build price of this 375,000. Okay? And how, how much is the markup to be added to the 375,000? What does it say? The build price should be 120% of original cost. So what do we do? Multiply 375,000 by 120%. How much will that give us, class? 450,000. 450,000. So the build price of the 300, of the goods shipped by the home office is 450,000. As far as the branch is concerned, that is the cost of these goods. Okay? So what happened to the 450? 50% was sold, 50% was unsold. Okay? So what what portion will what portion will form part of your inventory to be reported in your statement of financial position? It would be 50%. Okay, but what else do we have to add to the 450,000? What else is to be added to the 450,000? Do not forget to add the freight in of 2,000. So the total cost of the goods... Uh, Received by the branch, as far as the branch is concerned, is 452,000. Because as far as the branch is concerned, this is the cost. Okay? Uh, the branch is not aware of the markup class. So 452,000 times 50% or divided by 2 will give you how much? 226,000. Okay? Uh, So our answer for problem 12-5 would be 226,000. Let's try to read the question in problem 12-6. Using the data in the previous problem, what amount should the branches inventory from the home office be reported in the statement of financial position of power corporation as a whole? Okay, so this, this will now be different class. Uh, what is being asked is that the amount to be included in the inventory of the company as a as a whole. Okay. So what are you supposed to do? What's the rule here? If it's the statement of financial position of the company as a whole class, it should now be the true cost of the inventory. It should now be the true cost of the inventory. And we have actually solved for this earlier already. What is the true cost of the inventory held by the branch class? 188,500. So the answer in problem 12-6 would be 188,500. Because if the solutions manual you have there with you is from the older edition, the answer would be different. Because in the older edition, the 375,000 is already the build price. But in this problem, the 375,000 is still the cost. Okay, I hope you understand the changes made by the author here. Okay, now what I want to emphasize would be the 50%. Okay, this is one of the problems with this kind of illustration class. Since it's 50%, the complement is also 50%. We cannot be sure whether the student understood 
what was the 50% being used? Okay, are we solving for the 50% for the portion that is sold or the portion that is unsold? In solving this problem, the 50% that we have used is the 50% pertaining to the goods that are unsold because we're looking for the ending inventory. Okay, so if the problem said, class, the branch was able to resell 70%, if the problem was... If the problem stated that the branch was able to resell 70%, what does that mean? What percentage are we going to use to solve for the questions in this problem? We would be using 30%. Because it's the unsold portion that will form part of your ending inventory. Okay? What if it says 40% was sold? That means 60% was not sold. And which one will we be using to determine the ending inventory? It should be the portion or the percentage unsold. So if 40% was sold, then we would be using 60%. <coughs> so please take note. If this comes out in the exam, I will just be changing the uh, percentage sold class. Let's proceed to problem 12-7. Uh, problem 12-7 is a rather simple problem. Uh, Oro Corporation has a branch in Cebu. The branch reported income of 130000 for 2016. The branch has a balance in its home office account at the end of the year after closing of 765,000. Branch income has not been recorded by Oro's home office. During the year, Oro shipped inventory to the branch at a price of 160,000. Oro's original cost was uh, 90,000. So there's a markup of 70,000. All but 45%. <coughs> all but... Uh, 45% of the inventory has been resold to unrelated parties by year end. What is the balance in Oro's investment in branch account? Because this has nothing to do with our discussion on uh, shipments made above cost class. The concept in play here is simply the recording of your profit class. What did we say was the uh, effect of a branch income class to your reciprocal accounts, it will increase. Okay, and in this case class, the branch has already given us the balance of its home office account after closing. Based on our discussion for the previous chapter, what does it mean if it's after closing? It already includes the branch profit or the branch income. Okay, but what does the problem tell us? Branch income has not yet been recorded by the Home office. So that means the reciprocal accounts in the books of the branch of the home office are not reconciled. Why? The 765 is already after closing, but the, the home office has not yet recorded the branch income. So what do we think? What do we expect to be the difference between the investment in branch account and the home office account? It would simply be the amount of profit. Okay. Supposedly, the home office account would be the same as your investment in branch account. How much is the home office account? It's 765000 But our answer here is not letter D because uh, there is one transaction not yet recorded by the home office. And what transaction is that? It's the profit of the branch. How much is the profit of the branch class? Is that given in the problem? Yes. So if that is not yet recorded by the home office, that means, by the way, what's the entry in the books of the home office for branch income? Debit, investment in branch, and credit, branch income. If that entry was not yet prepared, that means the investment in branch account is understated. So what do we do? We deduct the 130000 from your 765000 You would get how much? 635000 and that would be the answer for problem 
Let's proceed to problem 12-A. A branch's ending inventory of merchandise shipped by the home office and purchased from outside vendors amounts to 50,000. Now, problem 12-A would be <coughs> somewhat more complicated class. Why? How is problem 12-A different from the previous problems we have discussed? The inventories held by the branch class come from two sources. One, coming from the home office, and two, coming from outside vendors class. And of course, goods coming from outside vendors will not have any hidden markup class. Okay, it is only the goods coming from the home office. Okay, the post-closing balance... <clears throat> In the unrealized gross profit in branch inventory account is 6,000 due to the home office practice of shipping merchandise at 20% above cost. Plus, the unrealized gross profit in branch inventory account is another name for your allowance account. Okay? So, you will encounter problems using different account title for the allowance account. The unrealized gross profit here is just the same as your allowance account. As what I've mentioned, the allowance account is an unearned income account. So there may be other ways in which uh, the allowance account will be presented in the problems. And this is one of such ways. Now, another important takeaway. The post-closing balance class in the unrealized gross profit represents the markup on your ending inventory. So please take note of that one. If it's already post-closing, Plus, remember, uh, if it's before adjustment, before closing, what does it represent? Mark up on your tigas. Okay, and what is the adjustment to your allowance account? The adjustments, remember, problem 12-4. Okay, the question there, there is how much is the adjustment? And if you're asked for the adjustment, what does it represent? It represents the mark up on your cost of goods sold. Now, if it's before closing or before adjustment, Balance of the allowance account, what does that balance represent? It represents the markup on your tigas. Okay, so before adjustment, minus adjustment will give you the after adjustment or the post-closing balance class. So before adjustment, balance is markup on tigas. Adjustment is the markup on your cost of goods sold. Third thing to remember, post-closing balance or after adjustment balance is the markup on your ending inventory. Okay, the markup on your ending inventory. Okay, and the question here is, the merchandise purchased from outside vendors contained in the ending inventory of the branch. So what is it asking from us? Out of the entire 50,000, I hope you understand, class. The 50,000 given the problem is the total ending inventory of the branch. But what else does the problem tell us? That the ending inventory of the branch comes from two sources. Those coming from the home office and those coming from outside vendors so the problem is trying to tell is asking us to segregate out of the 50,000 how much came from the home office how much came from <coughs> outside vendors and we can determine that class because we already have the 6,000 the post closing balance of the unrealized gross profit account and again what does this 6,000 represent this represents the markup on your ending inventory but what inventory has marked up only those coming from the home office so by using the 6000 class you will know how much of our ending inventory came from the home office okay so what do we do here 6000 represents the markup correct and the markup rate for the goods shipped by the home office is 20 percent so what do we do we divide 6000 by 20% and that will give you 30,000. Okay, uh, that will give you 30,000. Okay, and this is where uh, students would sometimes get it wrong. They would be very hasty in their computation class that what they would do is to immediately deduct the 30,000 from the 50,000. But why is it wrong to immediately deduct the 30,000 from the 50,000? The 30,000 is still at cost. 
Okay, remember the records of the branch is always at bill price as far as the goods coming from the home office is concerned. Okay, so if you were asked how much of your ending inventory, how much is the cost of the goods coming from the home office that is part of your ending inventory, your answer would have been <coughs> 30,000. Okay, but the question is out of the 50,000, how, how much came from outside vendors? So the first thing we have to do is determine how much came from the home office. Is it the 30,000? No, because the amount that we will include in our 50,000 is the bill price. But the 30,000 is still the cost. So what do you do? You add the 20% markup on the 30,000. 30,000 times 20% or simply 30,000 plus 6,000. That will give you how much? 36,000. What does the 36,000 represent here? This represents the amount of our ending inventory that came from the home office. How do we know? We still have the ending balance of our allowance in the amount of 6,000. So what do we do? If total ending inventory in the records of the branch is 50,000, and we already know that 36,000 came, came from the home office, what does that tell us? That the remaining 14,000 came from outside vendors. So your answer in problem 12-8 would be 14,000. So if we break down the 50,000, 14,000 came from outside vendors, 36,000 came from the home office. But what if you are asked, how much is the true cost of the ending inventory of the branch? You simply remove the markup class. You deduct the 6,000 from the 50,000. If you're asked for the total cost of the inventory, true cost of the total inventory of the branch, it would be 44,000. Okay, that's 50,000 minus 6,000 or simply the 14,000 coming from outside vendors plus the cost of the goods coming from the home office in the amount of 30,000. Okay, let's proceed to problem 12-9. <clears throat> During 2016, Jose Corporation, uh, let's read the question first. What is the cost of goods sold to be reported in the 2016 combined statement of comprehensive income? Class, supposedly class, if there are no markups for the shipments made by the home office to the branch, combined would simply be equal to cost of goods sold of home office plus cost of goods sold of the branch. Okay. But if there are already markup class on the shipments made by the home office, if we're looking for the combined class, we cannot rely on the cost of goods sold of the branch. Why can we not rely on the cost of goods sold of the branch? Because this is based on figures that include a markup. If we're looking for a combined amount class, it should be the true amount already. It should not have any overvaluation. Okay? But how does, how does the branch compute for its cost of goods sold. Beginning inventory plus shipments from home office plus purchases will give you the tigas of the branch minus the ending inventory of the branch will give you the cost of goods sold of the branch. And what's wrong with that? The flow, there's nothing wrong. It's just that the beginning inventory is overstated because of the markup on the beginning inventory. The shipments from home office is overstated because on the markup of the shipments from home office. If you will be able to remove the markup on your cost of goods sold, then that would already be the amount that should be added to the cost of goods sold of the home office to arrive at the combined cost of goods sold. So alternatively, class, supposedly this would be enough if there are no markup on the shipment, cost of goods sold of the home office plus the cost of goods sold of the branch. Okay, 
But the problem is, we cannot use this one because this is not based on true cost. So the combined cost of goods sold then is cost of goods sold in the home office plus the true cost of goods sold of the When we say true cost of goods sold, it should be at cost already, not at the build price, not at the valuation given by the home office, which includes a markup. So with this one, if combined cost of goods sold is equal to cost of goods sold of the home office plus the true cost of goods sold of the branch, what then can we do? We simply deduct the markup on branch cost of goods. Okay, so how then do we solve for the combined cost of goods sold? Cost of goods sold of the home office plus the true cost of goods sold of the branch. How do we arrive at the true cost of goods sold of the branch? The true cost of goods sold of the branch is the cost of goods sold reported by the branch minus the markup on the cost of goods sold of the branch. I will not write it down like this. Again. The true cost of goods sold of the branch is equal to the cost of goods sold reported by the branch minus the markup on the cost of goods sold of the branch. Okay, let's try if the things that we need to solve for the combined cost of goods sold are present in the problem. Uh, during 2016, Jose Corporation transferred inventory from its home office to its Laguna branch at a build price of 110,000. What does 110,000 represent? This would represent shipments from home office during the year. The inventory originally cost the company uh, 90,000. So the markup there is 20,000. The home office reported sales and cost of goods sold of 1,400,000 and 590,000 respectively. So I hope you understand what it means when it uses the word respectively, Kasa. How much is the sales? 1,400,000. How much is the cost of goods sold? 590,000. The Laguna branch reported sales and cost of goods sold of 675,000 and 300,000. All of the inventory had been sold by year end. Okay. Again, how do we solve for combined cost of goods sold? Cost of goods sold of the home office plus the true cost of goods sold of the branch. How do we arrive at the true cost of goods sold of the branch? The true cost of goods sold of the branch is equal to the cost of goods sold reported by the branch minus the markup on the branch cost of goods sold. Let's check if the things we need are given in the problem. Are we given with the cost of goods sold of the home office? Yes. How much? 500? 590,000. What else do we need? We need the true cost of goods sold of the branch. Are we given with the true cost of goods sold of the branch? No, because I have not encountered the problem giving you outright the true cost of goods sold of the branch. You will always have to solve for the true cost of goods sold of the branch. Okay, and how do we solve for the true cost of goods sold of the branch? What do we need? We need the cost of goods sold reported by the branch. How much is the cost of goods sold reported by the branch? Okay, as reported by the branch, it's 300. What's the only other thing we need, class? We need the markup on the cost of goods sold of the uh, branch, okay? But the problem is you will have to solve for the markup on your cost of goods sold of the branch. And I want us to do that by the uh, formula or the computation we did earlier, class. That the cost of goods, markup on the cost of goods sold is computed by Getting the markup on the beginning plus markup on shipments minus markup on ending. Okay. Do we have beginning inventory in this problem? Uh, Jose Corporation transferred inventory from its home office. This is a good number that being priced now. The inventory generally cost the home office reported. All of the inventory had been sold. Okay. So no beginning inventory class. So how much then is the markup on the beginning inventory? Zero. Okay, and then you add the markup on the shipments. How much is the markup on the shipments? 
How much? 20,000. Where did we get the 20,000? 110,000 build price of the shipments minus the 90,000. Okay? So that means the markup on the shipment is 20,000. Because if we add the zero and the 20,000, we will still get 20,000. So that means the markup on our TIGAS is still 20,000. Once we have the markup on our TIGAS, what else do we need? We need to deduct the markup on your ending inventory. Okay, how much is our ending inventory here? Why do I say that the markup on the ending inventory is zero? Because we do not have, we do not even have any ending inventory. How did we know, class? The problem states all of the inventory had been sold by year end. So that means the markup on your cost of goods sold is 20,000. And what do we do with the 20,000? We deduct it from the uh, 300,000. And this will give us how much class? 870,000. And that would be your answer for problem 12-9. And this is where students who study on their own would get it uh, wrong class in some instances. How did we get the 870 class? We added the 590 and 300 and we deducted the 20. Okay? And where did we get the 20? Essentially, it's just the difference between the 110 and the 90. So what's the possible wrong conclusion that students might arrive at class? That to arrive at the true co uh, to arrive at the combined cost of goods sold, you just add the cost of goods sold to the home office and the cost of goods sold reported by the branch and deduct the difference in the, the difference between the build price and the cost of the shipments. But that's not wrong. What are we supposed to deduct? Are we supposed to deduct only the markup in the shipments? No, what are we supposed to deduct? The markup on your cost of goods sold. But what happened in this problem? It so happens that the markup on your cost of goods sold is the same as the markup on the shipments. Why did that happen in this problem? Because we had zero beginning inventory and zero ending inventory. If you have beginning inventory coming from the home office, if you have ending inventory for goods coming from the home office, can we expect the markup on your cost of goods sold to be the same as the markup on your shipments? The answer is no. So again, why are we deducting the 20,000? We are deducting the 20,000 not because it is the markup on the shipments, but because it is the markup on your cost of goods sold, on the branch cost of goods sold. I hope you understand. We are deducting the 20 not because it is the markup on the... Uh, shipments but because it is actually the markup on your cost of goods sold but why are they the same will they always be the same <clears throat> will they be always be the same the answer is no why are they the same in this problem we do not have any beginning and ending inventory if you will be asked how much is the true cost of goods sold of the branch what will be our answer it would be 300 minus 20 Okay, so the true cost of goods sold of the branch would be 280000 So we can solve for it with using this one. Cost of goods sold of the home office, 590 Okay, <clears throat> true cost of goods sold of the branch, 280. 590 plus 280 will give you 870000 Okay. Plus, what if you're asked for combined sales? Simply add the sales of the home office and the sales of the branch. Why is it not asked here? Because it would be very simple. Okay. Let's proceed to problem 12-10. Uh, it's just entry class. Merchandise shipped to a branch for 30000 which includes... A 20% markup on cost was returned by the branch. To record the receipt of the returned merchandise, the home office should make the following entry. Uh, basically, the issue here, class, is on the computation of the, the cost. Okay? But very important takeaway, class. Uh, the question asks, 
for the record for the entry in the books of the home office so if ever you will see shipments from home office in the choices that should be wrong because you do not see the shipments from home office account in the books of the home office who uses the shipments from home office account it is the branch okay so since this is a return transaction class it will just be the opposite of a, a shipment transaction if there's a shipment transaction if you go to problem 12-1 the entry is debit investment in branch and credit allowance account and credit uh, shipments to branch but if it's a return transaction you will just have to reverse the entry so we would expect that the debits here would be shipments to branch and then another debit to the allowance for overvaluation account and credit to investment in branch from that alone class we'll be able to eliminate choices a and b the answer should only be between c and d and what's the difference between c and d it's just a matter of the computation on the cost and the markup what would you have done class if your answer is letter d you multiply the 20 percent with the thirty thousand. okay what what was your procedure if you answered letter c you divided by 30,000 by 120% to arrive at the cost. Now, which one is the correct procedure? Multiply 30,000 by 20% or divide 30,000 by 120%? Divide it by 120% because the markup rate is based on cost. Okay, so 30,000 divided by 120% will give you 25,000. And the 25,000 here is your cost of the shipment that was returned to the home office. And again, remember, class, remember, shipments to branch always at cost. The amount that goes into the shipments to branch account is always at cost. So if the build price is 30,000 and the cost is 25,000, that means the markup on the shipment is 5,000. So the answer in problem 12-10 is letter C. Shipments to branch 25,000, allowance for overvaluation 5,000, investment in branch 30,000.